Hey guys, welcome back to my show and today I'm going to share with you one of my very very important tips that I used in 2009 in how to generate multiple offers on multiple properties and automate the process without wasting any time. And this is very important because we are heading towards a period of time that many many people might be listing the property for sale and maybe it's going to hit us back again and we're going to have to send out offers and reach out in order to buy these properties when the market is going to turn into a seller market. So watch this clip I'm showing you right now. It's showing how I send out offers automatically with ease to multiple, multiple, multiple properties for just a click of a button. Okay, so watch this out. Okay, so how can you do it? How can you send out offers to many, 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 many properties, okay? Having your signatures, having your initials, having an, a, a perfected offer sent out by mail to the relevant listing agent on multiple, multiple properties. How can you perfect that process? How can you reach out? Let's say there was a thousand properties listed in the next couple of months and the market become distressed market. Okay, you want to send a lot of offers. That's what we used to do in 2009. And today I'm going to share with you the same script. I kind of advanced it. I improved it. And, you know, I, I'm going to share with you how I send out those offers with an ease of a click of a button. Okay, and I'm also going to share with you in this video my developer is contact information, how you can reach him and how you can develop this screen. This script I'm going to show you right now on my computer. You can develop it yourself. Okay, so it's very important for me that you watch this video and you understand the philosophy behind outreaching to buying properties in a distressed market condition because we are heading into a distressed market condition right now and that's my projection. Uh, I'm a property manager, we manage about 450 properties and we are seeing the trend of landlords, okay, starting to get scared and we're seeing the trend of tenants starting not paying rent and making those properties instead of an asset, making it a liability. So we are, we are turning into a period of time where assets can turn into liability. Remember, an asset is only an asset when it produces income for an investor. Otherwise, it's considered to be a liability. There is no, there is no reason to own it if it only takes money from you, okay? Take office buildings, for example, now, right now. Take commercial buildings right now, right now. Take all these places that are empty because of the corona and all the viruses and all the issues that we are having, all the health and all the scared and all the fear that is going on around us. So things are changing. The culture is changing and people are want to start uh, probably liquidate because they lost a lot of money in the market, okay? Evictions are not happening right now because they are held. And basically, we don't even know how long it's going to take. So we have to be prepared, guys. Okay, what I'm trying to teach you is to be prepared. I was prepared in 2009. And I developed my scripts at the auction and I was able to get my advantage over other bidders. Right now, if you're going to have a lot of distressed properties going out to the market, you're going to have a lot of people who wants to buy them. And I'm going to show you how you can have an advantage over your competition by automate, automating your uh, offers in a very, very personalized and very, very professional way that it, do, it doesn't seem like it's generated by a machine. That's the whole point, okay? I'm gonna show you how you can create those offers and having the signature and having the initials and everything, everything that you need in that offer, okay? And make it look like you actually wrote it down and you actually personalized it. So you put all that effort in creating that offer. And that's how the other real estate agent is gonna appreciate you and respond back to you very quickly. And basically, you, we might be getting into a bidding war, bidding war in the market. And we want to be preparing that. We want to perfect our processes. So right now, I'm going to take you into my computer. And I'm going to probably make a couple of uh, videos on this because I've developed uh, a few ways and how you can send the offers. And I also want to explain you how you can create those scripts yourself. I want to explain you which fields, which data fields you're going to have to define as static and which one you're going to have defined as dynamic. And I'm going to explain everything on my computer. It's going to be much easier for you to show you how does it work. And then I'm going to break it down to how you can implement it and what are the beaten pieces that you have to connect in order to create what I'm just going to show you right now. So I'm going to take you into my computer right now. And as you can see in my screen, I've developed this uh, 
uh, website and I've developed this uh, script here that, uh, and I'm gonna share with you the information of my developer and everything. And the way it works is very simple. Right now I'm just gonna take you into how I'm creating an offer. This is, this is basically an empty contract, what you see right now, okay? This is an as-is contract that we usually put when we um, send out an offer in Florida. And what I'm showing you right now is an empty contract and this is the contract I'm gonna use to actually uh, automate my uh, send out of my offers. And this is how it looks after it's done, basically. This is the end result of my automation. I'm gonna show you how it works and everything. So it might be a little bit overwhelming at the beginning, but we're gonna get to it and we're gonna understand everything. This offer I generated automatically. And I'm gonna show you how I did it afterwards, but I'm just gonna go over the fields, the data fields that are inserted into that contract automatically. And you can see, uh, I'm gonna talk about dynamic fields right now, and I'm gonna talk about static fields right now. And then I'm gonna explain why it's important. So in a contract, you have a couple of dynamic fields and you have a couple of static fields. Static fields mean that when you send out multiple offers and you are the buyers, you are the buyer, yeah? your company name is the buyer. So that field basically is a static because it's not gonna change. Every offer you're gonna send out, you're gonna have you as the buyer, your company name is the buyer. As you can see, my, my, that field here over here, Coren Venture Group, that's my company name. So that's, that, that is a static field. That's a field I defined as a static. And also the seller, because I don't know the name of the seller for each property, I put it as an owner of record and that also a static field. Now let's talk about dynamic fields. Dynamic fields are fields that are changing in every offer. For example, you can see a street address, city, and zip. When I'm making up an offer, I'm making up an offer on multiple properties. So obviously the address is gonna change and the county might change, the tax ID number might change, which is the folio, and then the legal description, right? So all of those fields, those are dynamic fields. I'm gonna need to know those fields for all of the offers I'm gonna be sending out and this is a dynamic field. Now, my offer price, my offer price is not a static field, it's a dynamic field. It's a number that I have to enter. That's why uh, it's a dynamic field. The deposit I'm putting is a static field. So I'm using that deposit as $5,000. Now, my title agent company and all that information is also a static field, meaning that I'm gonna choose the title company name and I'm gonna send the offer with my title in it, my, my, my um, closing agent, so that's a static field. Uh, those, those numbers over here, it's a calculation of my formula, so basically it's an offer price minus my deposit, that's the remaining price, and my closing date is also static, I set it up to 45 days from the day that I send out the offer, so we're gonna have a closing date within 45 days, as you can see here, this is the date and this is the closing date. And my initials, you see, that's my, my basically, that's the initials. That's, as you can see, it shows like I've been writing it with a, with a pen, but I haven't. And I'm gonna show you how I actually took that picture and uh, put it in every offer that I sent out. And that's a static field. And uh, cash offer, buyers will pay cash. That's a static field for me as well and that's a static field, my initials. And basically, until up to the end of the contract, I'm gonna have the terms here that this is dynamic field. I, can, I will show you how I put it automatically on each contract as well. And signature, and this is dynamic, it's set up here all the time. Okay, this is a static because I'm only taking one and a half percent and I'm giving everything else back to the listing agent, okay? This is another tip I wanna give you guys. Okay, when you are sending out offers, if you're a realtor, if you're an investor, if you have a license, you can get to the MLS and get all those people. Give the other listing agent is full commission if you can or give them most of the commission, okay? Because we are not right now thinking about making commission. We are thinking about getting the properties and 20, 30, 40, 50% discount. We're gonna be sending out multiple offers and we're gonna do it like we want to make flips. So it's the same principle. We want the other listing agent to work for us, okay? We want to give him an incentive. 
This is a very, very important thing I want to tell you. Give incentives to the listing agents. If you are an investor, you want to buy these properties, don't ask for commissions, don't ask for anything. You know, I'm not even arguing for that. And usually I negotiated with them and I give them back everything. They, they want just so they can get me the deal. So this is how my automated offer looks like. And this is how an empty offer look like. And I'm gonna take you into two steps. I'm gonna take you into the step of creating uh, one offer and I'm gonna take you into the step of creating multiple offers. And the principle is pretty much the same. So let me show you right now on my computer how it works. If I go to dashboards, you will see that I have created an offer here. And this is what I need to fill in, okay? And we're gonna do it together in a second in how I'm creating a single offer, okay? This is a single offer that I am going, uh, this page I'm gonna use only to send uh, one offer. And I'm gonna show you also my bulk offers, how it look like. We're gonna get to that as well. That's where I send my multiple offers. I can send 10 offers, 20 offers, 100 offers, 1,000 offers, okay? And it's, all, it's gonna take me maybe an hour or two to do so. So right now, I'm gonna create an offer with you together. I'm gonna go to the BCPA, which is a property appraisal in Broward County. And I'm just gonna put, I don't know, I'm just gonna put um, an address. And we're gonna make an offer on that property right now together, on that specific property. So basically, Owner of record, right, as we discussed, this is a static field. That's gonna stay here, I'm not gonna touch it. This is the buyer name. This is the company I'm actually buying the properties with. So that's the company name. So that's a static name. The property address is not a static name. So all I need to do basically is copy the property address. And then the county is the same, I have to put the um, folio and then I'm going to make an offer of $250,000. I can change my deposit here if I want to. So I can choose 10,000, 15, 20, whatever I feel like. Right, then I put my legal description over here. Is this just copy pass? Then I may choose if I want to assign a contract or not. And this is very important for all sellers. So anybody who wants to flip contracts, right? We've been talking about flipping contracts and being an all seller and all that stuff. And sending out sending out offers is one of the things that you know work for a lot of people because it's very serious, right? You have to create an offer. Think about it. When you send out a letter or when you send out uh, an email or when you just call and say, I wanna buy this property, it's not the same as you send out an offer. When you send your company name, when you send your proof of funds, when you send your LLC article of incorporation, and when you show who you are, right? You are serious. Being serious is very important in getting the deal, first of all. Second of all, if you are a wholesaler, if you wanna sell the deal on, you have an option over here that I developed is the buyer may sign and the contract. You may sign it, you may not sign it, you can choose whatever you like, okay? So the listing sales associate here, uh, that's a dynamic field, that's a field that I download from the MLS. I'm gonna walk you through how I do multiple offers later, but that can be any ABC, Realty, or whatever. Whoever is the listing broker. Now I can change the terms here if I want. Uh, seller must close all permits prior to closing. It's very common. And basically I am putting up the email of the realtor that I wanna send the email to. So I don't, I don't have, I even have to go to my Outlook, generate the offer, print the offer, um, scan the offer, um, open my email, send the email, attach it, attach the file, attach all that stuff. I don't need to do it. I'm doing it from a single page, okay? And I'm clicking 
generate the PDF and then the email is gonna be sent out with everything. And I'm gonna show you on my computer how it looked like when we get it. So I'm just gonna put my email address. And then I'm gonna do cash offer for your property, a low agent name, and um, that's gonna be ABC Realty. So listing agent says associate, that's, it needs to be actually here. And you can call the agent Lisa Joe. So basically right now what I have to do is I have to click send and I'm supposed to get the offer over here. And my email is already open here and I can show you what happens. I can also obviously include uh, proof of funds, article of incorporation, or anything I want to do and add it up into here if I want to. So that's going to add up as an attachment and I can just, I don't know, choose up a file here, whatever. And that can be an attachment, proof of funds or anything that you need. And the only thing I need to do is click generate PDF. So I'm going to click on that right now. And this is my email and I'm going to show you how am I receiving the offer that I sent out right now to myself, basically. So it says email sent out true. And I'm waiting to get the email over here. It's probably uploading. It's probably uploading the files right now. It's probably um, uploading the attachments. But uh, let's wait and see. Okay, I already heard the noise. Let's clean that up. So here you go. This is how I received the offer. Cash offer for property address. Right, if you look at the script again, it's very important for me to, for you to understand how it works so you can implement it yourself. If you look at the script, we're gonna go back. It says cash offer for property. This is also a dynamic field that basically we are adding up the property address for the subject line. So uh, we are very, very personalized. And usually what I do is I also head up here, please confirm receipt. So that also helps to kind of like get more engagement on your, on your uh, offers. So this is a dynamic field and also the agent name is a dynamic field. If I go back to, my, to the email, you can say, hello, Lisa Joe. So I'm actually personalizing the offer in a way that my email is personalized. You see, I'm giving them a good offer. I'm explaining them in the email what I want, what I don't want, who am I, etc. And then you can see the offer here. I'm gonna open it right now. This is the offer that we um, did together right now. So here you go. All of the information that I showed you on the dynamic and static fields are happening right now. Owner of record, stay the same. Company name, stay the same. As you can see, it was a dynamic field. So you can see here, here's the uh, property address. And I uh, forgot uh, to delete the legal description too, but he put it anyway, but I could have just deleted it. And I should have, because if there is not a second legal description, um, we can just delete that uh, field, basically. One second. Okay, so as you can see, I put a $250,000 uh, offer, $5,000 less, two forty-five dollars to close. All my terms, my closing agent is here. Uh, my initials are here. Uh, closing day, the offer, I'm giving them three days to respond to me. Today is the 8th of April. So I'm giving them three days to respond to me. And if we go down, you can see all my initials are in there. And basically I am, you see seller must close all permits prior to closing. So I add up another term. I'm able to add up terms on the clauses as well. So I don't have to change my scripting all the time. And you can see my signature and you can see the listing agent is Lisa Joe. ABC Realty. Usually what I do after Lisa Joy is I put percentage. I put, if I wanna give her all of the percentage, I just put 6% and then she knows she's getting 6% and she opens an offer and says, oh my God, I got a $20,000 less than what I, what I wanted, but I'm getting 6%. Right now I have no offers from any other buyers 
Uh, you know what? I think I should just present it to my seller and see if he agrees to that. And if I can buy a property that, you know, 50% on a dollar or 60% on a dollar right now in this market when people don't send out offers, that's what I would be doing in the next month or so. So it's very important that will you set yourself for success for the future and not just stay still today and think what's going to happen because we know what's going to happen, okay? Things are changing in the world. People are going to have to find ways to sustain their life and find food and find place to be, you know, until everything is over. And those properties that might be vacant and might be occurring expenses for them and tenants that are not paying and evictions that are not, you know, that you're not able to file evictions or foreclosures. I don't know. It becomes like you are all of a sudden having a liability on yourself. So we are as a problem solvers. We are as investors. We are as people who have the tools to overcome problems are going to prevail this period of time. And it's very important you guys to know that. Okay, because a lot of investors are absentee. A lot of investors don't know how to manage their own properties. A lot of investors have problems. Okay, it's not as smooth as it used to be. And plus, you have a lot of leverage these days, a lot of corporate date these days. And, you know, people are just not working in the capacity they worked before. So time is changing and the opportunity here is to be smarter than anybody else and be prepared. You have to be prepared. This is what I did in 2009, 2008 when I started buying foreclosures. I understood where the opportunity is, okay? And I understood how to prepare for it, having an advantage over my competition. And right now I'm just showing you a very small example of how you can generate one offer. But at the same token, I'm going to show you how you can actually generate multiple offers, even a hundred offers within an hour. Within an hour of work, you can just generate a hundred offers or a thousand offers. You know, it's a lot of offers you can send out when things go south.